I was probably going to watch uh, Captain America Civil War, but I have a duty to the people. You see, uh, I've made a promise, and I must give the people what they've asked for. So, here it is. The first in the disjointed trilogy that is known as The Punisher. Released in 1989 and filmed mostly in Australia, The Punisher is a violent, low-budget action film that falls under the category of Ozploitation, used to describe films made in Australia after the introduction of the R rating. It has edge, it was groovy and hip, it was kinda like a Tarantino film, if Tarantino had no sense of plot. And the same year that Spudnik made its orbit around the world, little Dolph Lundgren was born, and the solid muscle developed into the actor known best for his role in Rocky IV, the, let's face it, best Rocky film since the original. What? It's just an opinion. I like it, okay? And so, He-Man was the obvious choice to play the greatest of all Marvel superheroes. Doctor Strange. That's pretty good. But it's taken! Not that I know much about comics, but I gather that the Punisher needed to be someone dark, someone who had a tormented life, and needed to take the law into his own hands. In any case, this is kind of a boring, cliched story. This would work better as a side story to another hero storyline, but we'll get to that later. Dolph Lundgren was an obvious choice. He had the build and the grim face and... the grim face and... Well, he did look mighty and angry and, uh, I, I guess tormented. Obviously, Lundgren was someone the uh, studio, New World, could afford, but uh, he probably wasn't the best choice. Acting-wise, he doesn't really go beyond the monotone. But, I still love you, don't worry, buddy. I'm gonna cover Who is that? Cover this. Oh. Your holy shit, the Punisher! It's him! Coming to a theater near you except for the USA. New World Pictures was apparently owned by Roger Corman. Why is he connected to all these early Marvel films? New World eventually found its home at 20th Century Fox, but before then, it made such classic hits as Down and Dirty Duck, Godzilla 1985, and who could forget... Wait. Obviously, I'm a respectable film critic. I can't comment on films that I have yet to see. The only reason I haven't seen them, though, is because I'm busy with such classics as Citizen Kane and The Godfather and The Punisher and Captain America 1990 uh, very soon. Strangely enough, the film never got released on the big screen in the US, not until the world premiere at Durham, North Carolina, the town known for Bull. Please, that joke is only for the locals. The film was directed by Mark Goldblatt, who directed Dead Heat, but edited many other films like X-Men The Last Stand, G-Force, Armageddon, Super Mario Brothers, and the little indie film directed by an unknown James Cameron called Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Nominated for an Oscar in 1992, he lost to JFK himself. The famous Punisher logo itself doesn't appear in the film at all, except on the knife that the Punisher uses to kill people. It's a bit of an odd choice. They had the rights to the logo. I mean, did Dolph just not want to wear a t-shirt with a skull on it? Is that like some kind of bad omen? I mean, tons of great guys wear t-shirts with skulls on them. I mean, look at the guy who lives next door. This film came smash right between two huge comic book films, Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh-huh, definitely not ripping off anything there. Okay, it's not really possible that the film could A, be ripping off a film that came out the same year, 1989, and also be ripping off another film that would be coming out a year later. But there's just way too many similarities. And even look at this, the Punisher lives in the sewer, there's a woman in a yellow jumpsuit, how, how could you miss all this? Wait, 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 I'm just, I'm just getting ahead of myself. I'm just pointing out the weird coincidences that the film has. You know, let's just all relax 
and see how the film really is. <laughs> No, no, uh, no, no, this is insane. This is insane. This is dumb. This is crazy. This is insane. This is like a bee stinging a bee. Makes no sense. Wrong. 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 The whole film is cheap. Very cheap. Not cheap, cheap, but pretty cheap. Uh, besides that opening kill, which is still making me go wild, the rest of the film is pretty generic. It's kind of hard to believe that this is a Marvel film in the same sense of Howard the Duck, except this film is a bit more on key. For instance, the basic story of the Punisher is presented, backstory is the same as the comics, and he has the basic traits. But other than that, uh, who's this guy? The British actor man. Mr. P! Happy hunting! Mr. P... 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 Uh... P... P... Penguin? Puberty? Poppers? Poppers penguins? Step up change, step up change, step up change. Word. Despite the obvious Spielberg influence. Turn it off! Turn it off! Bright light! Bright light! No! Get those lights off! Off! The film is pretty low on any cinematic technical achievements. The story is easy to follow. It's about Frank Castle getting revenge on the mob for the murder of his family and decides to bring justice in his own way. But when the mob's kids get kidnapped, he decides, with the motivation of the British actor, to save them, and the leader of the gang enlists his help to save his son from the Japanese, who are, for the most part, actually played by real Asian actors. For being such a low budget and silly film, it has a very progressive side to it. The main character is a typical white hero, sure, but the lieutenant is played by a black man, who has the assistance of a woman, and both get pretty equal screen time compared to the Punisher. The best part has to be this scene. I came back from my dolly. This is something that I have yet to see in any other modern film, and this came out 27 years ago. So, I would say the film from a white boy's perspective is a little bit progressive in a way? Kind of? A little bit? Uh, but how's the film as a whole? is not brief enough. Life was brief for this dog though. I bet they're dead for sure. Now what do you think you're gonna do with that? Play Miss Pac-Man or something? Oh, I'm gonna play Miss Pac-Man as opposed to Pac-Man because I'm a woman, huh? Actually, as far as gameplay goes, Mrs. Pac-Man always has been better than the original Pac-Man. So what does that tell you about the men versus women debate, huh? Women are better, get over it. The film ends with the Punisher and the mob leader saving his son, but the leader turns on the Punisher last second, a brawl ensues where the leader gets killed, and the son, in retaliation, shoots the Punisher. Yeah, not even lying, that's actually how the movie ends. Dieu, mes petits leur dit-elle, alors qu'ils enfouissaient leurs yeux pleins de larmes dans la jupe légère, qui sentait bon la maman chaude, la maman douce, la maman qu'on aime tant. Dolph Lundgren est le pleurnicheur. I'll say it. It's good old popcorn entertainment. It's an 80s flick with stuff that blows up real good. And at under 90 minutes, it's a really quick watch. So if you have the time to spare, might as well watch it. The film has not reached Blu-ray in the US quite yet, but I have a DVD, an import from Korea for some strange reason. The features are the same as any DVD copy of the film though. A trailer, a synopsis of the film, you know, if you don't feel like watching it, you know, and you want to learn Korean and read about it actor profiles, and the strangest photo gallery ever. It's just a 40 second video with stills from the film. So just throw any sitcom music over it and you have the credits for a TV show. So buy it or watch it online for, for free. Very legally, of course, very legally or don't watch it and just wait for a better Punisher to come by. It could only take about, what, 15, 25 more years? I must break you. Now this is the part of the show where I use my magic powers to make this all a dream. Ah! C 
See you next time at 8. <laughs>